Hello, I'm Larry Marteau, and the current principal of Mount Marion Elementary School, located in upstate New York. Our school is nestled in the Catskill Mountains, which is rich in all types of history. Every day our students get to experience this 4.5 billion year history in a timescape that frames our walls. What you're about to see is the evolution of this mural. How do you like working on a mural? Well, I think it's really fun because you get to draw, you get to paint, and like, a, like the drawing of the planets, it's really fun because you get to draw like curves, and then it helps you draw. Uh, I've got the name written down. He, he's about. <laughs> these guys are about life size, though. <laughs> the American flag. Someone suggested Mr. Manley holding the American flag. <laughs> the idea of the mural and mural project is to be more than merely a decoration, you know, for the wall, just the idea is that it continues to work years after it's done. Mural painting is a real form of art and also goes along with history, showing what life is like uh, at any particular period. So uh, historically, uh, it's, it's just a wonderful medium that gives us our, you know, history, our heritage. You could illustrate history books with murals. You know, uh, you don't have to uh, commission an artist to make special <laughs> images. I mean, it's all right there. Um, I'd like to see more of it being done you know, around the country so people could be in contact with their local history and uh, regional history. One of the values is that uh, the project has incorporated people from the community to come in and, and actually work on it uh, to participate in its creation. Uh, it will give this, uh, the community a sense of, of timely, timeliness uh, in that they, can, they will have a sense of how this particular area develop uh, over a period of time. Uh, it will, will also be uh, something that people can come in and not only enjoy but can, can gain some knowledge from, from looking at it. I think there again that it's the history of the community and I think it would be wonderful if people from the community came in to look at it as a piece of art and people look, came in to look at, at it came into the school and came into Mount Marion as you would in a, in a museum and, and look at it as a piece of art, not only for its artistic value, but for, um, for the depiction of local history. It shows that people, that education is a lot more than just uh, math papers and, and small classroom work, you know, it's, it involves a lot, a lot more than that. Yeah, I think it will be uh, very much a symbol of our interest in educating the students at this particular time in, and, and place, uh, very much like we know that the Statue of Liberty was, was built or uh, erected in 1876 to commemorate the centennial of our nation. Uh, I think that this mural can, can be like a, a dedication to uh, Saugerties in, in, as a whole. And, and how many people were really involved in, in, uh, in caring about our past and our future and our children. It can give some cohesiveness to the community uh, because it's such a positive thing in light of some of the, the turmoil that has been going on within the community with the, with the dump, um, with political things that are going on in town. It's, it's a positive energy and I think it could be potentially a wonderful thing for the community and I think it's something that the community really needs now. Um, it needs this type of um, positiveness. So I think, I think it's going to have a wonderful impact on the community.
It's a pretty cool mural. It's fun. I think probably the best thing I like about it is the part for the Indians and the mammoths and all that. It's pretty fun working on the mural. Mr. Pantel's a great artist. And, uh, well, all I can say is it's a great mural. I like the mural because I like to draw, paint, and work on the diorama. I like um, painting on the mural because it's fun and you learn how, a lot of stuff. And Mr. Pantel was good because he, he told us a lot about the Sorides history. We had a cafeteria wall that was not really energy efficient. Uh, it was built when Mount Marion was built, uh, 1957. And uh, over the years, there was a lot of heat loss, and, and because of that, a lot of money was, was wasted. So at, in approximately 1987, the plexiglass wall of the cafeteria was removed, taken down, and replaced with the wall that you see now. Once the job was completed, uh, it was at uh, the fall of 87, the uh, wall had above the windows a series of six panels, each panel approximately 10 to 11 feet square. And it was when the panels were painted, were painted white and with, with like a blue trim, that um, I had the idea uh, of a mural. The idea for a mural basically didn't take hold until about three years ago. And uh, then uh, through a lot of cooperation from various PTA members, Mr. Lee, Mr. Knaus, the Board of Education, they gave, uh, they gave me the okay to proceed with the, uh, with the concept. The process itself started with, with an idea. And the idea was to create a mural um, on the cafeteria wall that somehow involved the entire school. That was the initial idea. Uh, part of the initial idea was to have all of the kids in some way uh, perhaps have like a, a contest to see what ideas they had. That was really basically the initial uh, beginning. It was really not a preconceived idea. It, but there was no notion about what we're going to do, what it's going to look like, what the end product was going to be. Um, it was just a conception of this is a wonderful um, idea that will touch a lot of people's lives and it will, um, it will, the end product really is important but the process by which people have become involved in this project, this, um, this community project is to me sometimes more valuable than, than the end product itself because I think a lot of um, people are getting some things out of it that they did, had no idea that this would happen, that it would be so wonderful. When the idea was first discussed at a PTA meeting, just kind of an idea that was kicked around back in 1990 or earlier, um, we had one of our parents, Odette Reinhardt, decided to do a little bit of research um, on the project. She went to a local school, uh, Woodstock Elementary School, who had done a mural project, um, spoke with the artist there, had the artist come down and speak with Mr. Manley. <clears throat> and um, she found that they were partially funded from the New York State Foundation for the Arts. Uh, a little more research and some phone calls, we received a, a packet from the Foundation of the Arts, which gave us a lot of information on the types of grants that were available. At that time, the the process involved the formation of a, of a basic committee, which we call the Mural Committee. It was comprised of myself, uh, Tori Gudmanson, who's chairperson of the art department at the senior high school, uh, Sue Persico, president of the PTA, uh, two other PTA members, uh, Marsha Rubenstein and Nancy Wolf, uh, participated along with uh, Ann Bergen, who is our art teacher. Later on, we were fortunate to have Virginia Greco come aboard, and she's president, president of the Ulster County Art Association. Also included were Flo Hyatt, a member of our Board of Education, and Cynthia Kendall, uh, who is uh, one of our special education teachers. 
Uh, part of the, the planning, in part of the planning, we wanted to involve all facets of the school community. Uh, not only kids in regular education, we wanted to include uh, special education, gifted and talented. We wanted to not, not only include kids at the elementary level, but kids from the junior, senior high school. So the initial planning process involved uh, basically a cross-section of people from the district, both in the district and out of the district, uh, to, to try to bring in not only kids from the junior high level and the other levels that I, that I had mentioned, but also to integrate people from the community in, into the process as, as we went along. Working together, we found some common goals, some, some common strategies, and this group met with the consultancy for a two-day period, and we set together a, a general plan of action for the project. Uh, we realized, though, that it would take an awful lot of planning. A, a good plan is really important when you're going to have a good project and have a good outcome. In December of 91, we began our artist search. Uh, flyers were sent out. We sent uh, out advertisements in all of the local newspapers because what we wanted to do was to, to get a, a, a wi as wide a range of candidates from which to choose. And uh, after our deadline was set, uh, applications began, began coming in. We received approximately 35 applications. Now became the difficult task of trying to determine which artist out of the 35 would best suit our needs in, in working with our project. Um, the first notice I had gotten of it is when the uh, committee searched for an artist, put out a number of ads, made a number of telephone calls, and uh, inviting artists to apply. And uh, so I heard that the area was about 10 by 60 feet, and I started thinking about it. And uh, I just thought in terms of something that I would call pedagogically sound. Uh, I like the idea of a mural that, you know, while it involves the students right now, you know, it's wonderful to be working for them and for them to have the opportunity to work on such a project, something that will continue working after it's completed. In other words, not just a, a decoration of the wall in uh, the room there. So uh, I just felt something, you know, of historical significance to um, the area, you know, and it should cover history and natural history and, you know, some other sciences as well, you know, that's where we have astronomy coming into this, as well as inventions. So, um, and the mural committee, you know, was thinking in terms of the same thing. So, uh, we just sort of worked together very, very well on this. Um, just, you know, further developing the ideas of what could be included, and it just turns out to be like half a billion years of known history, so uh, there's a lot in this mural, <laughs> you know, a bit of everything. The mural, in our mind at that time, was uh, to reflect parts of local history, specifically Sorgati's history, because we wanted this mural, uh, we wanted to have not only our kids, but generations to come to have some kind of an ownership in, in the concept. And uh, so therefore the theme of, of local history came about. What's wonderful about it is you have someone like living here. There's, I mean, Rick is, he set up his house here. <laughs> He's, and it's, it's great because the kids can peek by and, and peek in and see what's going on, what, what you know, how it's growing. Um, and what's wonderful is an artist from the area, and this is such a a, um, a a local history type of project that it makes it even more special.
part of the mural was the part with the Indians because I really like Indians and I like learning what they did around Saunders. Okay, my favorite part about the mural was painting. <laughs> mm -hmm. I learned shading and I think Mr. Pantel's a good artist. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool and Mr. Patel Pantel, I think he's a really good artist and I think the whole school really did a nice job. I think that Mr. Pantel has taught me a lot since I've been here. He's taught me that um, if you really try, you can do a lot. I've really enjoyed painting on the mural. I can't wait to see it when it gets up. And I, and I can remember that um, if my children come to Mount Marion School, they'll be able to see that mural and they'll know that I painted it. You can clap when I'm not singing, and any other time that I'm not singing, playing, or whatever, that's a good time to clap, all right? Here we go. Well, we danced and danced and danced all night. She asked me for a kiss. I closed my eyes, held my breath, and puckered up my lips. She kissed me once. She kissed me twice. But one more time. I love sorry, Sue. You want to try that? <laughs> Here we go. She kissed me once. She kissed me twice. One more time. And then you're saying, I love Socrates soup. Here you go. Before any painting had been done, any drawing or any planning, uh, I met with every grade level in this school here. Uh, and I asked them for ideas. And a lot of ideas were submitted. And uh, a lot of them were used in the mural. Uh, and um, uh, a number of suggestions came from a number of the members of the faculty and staff. And uh, a lot came from all over because a lot of people have, you know, contributed a lot of interest into this project. Uh, and the committee, too, has just been fantastic in, in the help that they've been giving regarding this. From artists that, that I've known of in the past, to artists like Reginald Marsh, who did a wonderful mural project uh, down in the um, Customs House in New York City back during the WPA period in the 30s. Uh, Michelangelo actually watched the movie The Agony and the Ecstasy. <laughs> and uh, so that was, you know, quite interesting. Of course, that was the movie, you know, but then reading about it. And as usual, he uh, estimated, um, uh, what was it, six months to a year to complete his project. And it just, it, it just took a lot longer. It ran into many, many years. 
and all that. So, but I see some of the problems that develop. For example, uh, this is getting a little off the topic, but it might be useful. Uh, when even doing a small painting, many times an artist will have to change part of that painting uh, to make it work right. Sometimes there's a part of the picture that is so beautifully done, but it has to be removed because the whole picture falls apart. You know, sometimes you can't sacrifice the whole picture just for the sake of one little part. There have been a number of changes on this of things that have been painted in and had to be removed or reversed or, or something to that effect. What types of difficulties have you encountered in this project? Well, the main difficulty, <coughs> if any, is that of not knowing what it's going to look like until it's up. That's the main difficulty. Uh, we could lay the panels down on the floor here and draw things out and, uh, and then put them up against the wall here and stand back 25 feet and look at it and it doesn't look right. They have to take it down and erase what had been sketched in and redo it until it does look right. So a lot of it is difficult uh, without really, really knowing. Uh, if it was up there on the wall and I drew it, I'd still have to stand back, you know, no matter what. But this is the usual problem that comes with large-scale projects such as this. There is a sketch and uh, that sketch has a grid on it and I work as closely to that as possible. How about some of the pleasant surprises? Pleasant Things surprises. you didn't anticipate that turned out better than you thought. It's just a lot of fun. <laughs> it's fun working with the students. Uh, I enjoy working with them. Uh, there's such a, a lot of talent there. I've been learning from the children here. Uh, there are a lot of bright kids here, and I think they're all wonderful. And, and they have been fun, you know, to be with, too. Uh, in terms of pleasant surprises, oh, hearing lots of old stories about what had happened here, you know, years ago. Uh, there's, one person was telling me about when uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt came to Mount Marion. Well, he was a Democrat, he was the president then, and Socrates was a Republican, so people just closed their shutters and closed their curtains And when he came during the day. And that was their way of saying, you know, this is not your turf. <laughs> you know, little stories like that, and I uh, heard quite a few, you know, of that sort, you know and different attitudes, and then the changes through time, too. How do you want people to react to this mural? Well, of course, I'd want them to react in a positive way, but what I'd like them to really be able to see is that uh, how everything all started, where we came from, and maybe that could give us some kind of an indication where we're going. Um, I, like I want to show different kinds of people in the mural, especially, you know, in the very recent part of it, because I think it's important that we show mixtures of different kinds of people. I just always felt uh, life would be so boring if we were all the same. And I think that's the nice thing about living uh, in America is that we are such a mixture of peoples, and I feel we're richer for that. Um, so I want to be able to show that. I want to be able to show a respect for what has happened in the past, though, and in not forgetting what has happened in the past. Okay, we can't put the whole history of everything in here, but you know, this is strictly imagery. Um, but if I could get some, a little bit of philosophy in there too, in a positive way, of course, uh, then I think it, it'll be wonderful as long as you know, get, get people to see that, you know, and uh, react to it and enjoy it in a, po a positive way. Um, this is also meant for teaching. Okay, um, teaching as what has been here for the last 500 million years. And <clears throat> uh, people could see Main Street as it looked in recent memory, you know, 30, 40 years ago, and maybe a little bit earlier they see the old mill there that probably a lot of people here had worked at. It, 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 you know, I know that uh, a good part of this town has worked there one time or another. You can see the old historic buildings, which, you know, most people take pride in. You know, they're in the mural. Uh, and just going back further in time, they could see that, you know, the Native Americans did have a culture here, you know, when they were the earlier residents of this area. And they had a community here. And then just before that, seeing the kind of natural history 
that had taken place there. So uh, it, it's part of a, a, a learning experience, and uh, and I just hope aesthetically too it will be you know an experience as well. I want people's first reaction to be wow, because that's my reaction. It's it's an incredible appreciation for the talent of some artistic people um, and, and what that can accomplish. Wow is the first thing I, I'd like them to, to do. Um, and I think that will continue on through the years. That response should be the same 50 years from now or today. Uh, but I'd also like them to see that this school appreciates and has has a high value for the local history that we want to pass something from generation to generation and we always have to have that as a high regard for we have to hang on to our past so that we can create a future I want people to think that it's beautiful and that it's spectacular and that it's uh, was truly a gift from many people. If you look at masterpieces of art, whether they're smaller paintings or large murals from the past that we, we look at today, they still emit sort of uh, emotional level and uh, give you a sense of how they saw their world at that time and that sort of thing. And I think that in that sense, people seeing it 50 or 100 years or however long it gets to and even the panels can be taken down should the school be redone or whatever, if you want to think that far ahead, would show how the students and adults that worked on this at the time saw the past through the present history or the evolution or timescape of Saugerties. Well, first of all, when they see this, the mural in this school, I, I would like them to just stand back and just be in awe of it, simply because of its size. Secondly, I'd like them to start wondering a little bit about who did it, uh, how did they come up with the idea, uh, and then start looking at the different individual parts of the mural and see how they all fit together, that time and, sp and our space here uh, are all integrated somehow. Uh, I, I'm sure when the mural is done, it's going to be a knockout visually. It's going to be really something to see. Uh, it's also going to be very uh, educational, very instructional in terms of, of uh, the world and, and time. Fifty years from now, I would like people who come into Mount Marion School to look at this mural and, and say, number one, I had a part of this. I had a, I had a hand in the creation of this mural. Um, I would also like them to think that, uh, that we, the people today, had had some kind of foresight and vision to create something that that will last and span the years so that it could be enjoyed 50 years from now not just today and learn lots of things about drawing and about subjects. When you look back, if we have a reunion here, we know that we were part of this. And we can feel good about ourselves that we helped make this project.